and none of me. Holy Spirit, have your way. We take authority over principalities and powers over Cleveland County, over Warren County, over this state. We take authority right now. We are doing you in Jesus' name. You must come down. We break your hope over Cleveland County in Jesus' name. We take authority over the spirit of competitive jealousy in Cleveland County, in the state of Mississippi, in Warren County, in Fayette in Jesus' name, in Natchez in the name of Jesus. We command you to cease and desist and your maneuvers against the body of Christ. And we speak unity. We speak love. We speak revival. Hallelujah, Lord God. We declare Jesus is Lord over Claiborne County. Jesus is Lord over Warren County. Jesus is Lord over Jefferson County. Jesus is Lord over these United States of America. And Father, we lift up President Donald J. Trump, Vice President Mike Pence. Hallelujah, President-elect Joe Biden. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. We lift them up to you, God. Give them wisdom and how to lead in these last days. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and clap your hands. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and we come on, we can do better than that.
You and it will send them to you all postage paid. All you have to do is send your name and the title of the sermon. And we'll get that in the mail to you in Jesus' name. So any sermon you want from us, we do, and we don't have any CDs for Tuesday. Let me correct that. No CDs for Tuesday, but on Sundays, we do have CDs. And I'm telling you, the Lord has been really pouring out his word about healing. So if there's a lot of misunderstanding, we've given you line upon line and precept upon precept. You can send a text to 601-618-8283. Send us your name, your, your address, and tell us specifically what it is that you want, and we'll get that to you in Jesus' name. All right, Genesis chapter number four, exposing the spirit of competitive jealousy. This is a major stronghold in the body of Christ. Now, if it's going on in the world, the world is doing what they should be doing. But the spirit of competitive jealousy is a major stronghold that's going on in the body of Christ. How do you deal with strongholds? With the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit will uproot those strongholds. No word, you're going to continue to go the same direction you were going. All right, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. I'm reading from the King James Version. It says this. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. She actually said, I have gotten a man from Elohim. A, in other words, she had gotten a man of God. Mm -hmm. And she again bare uh, his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of ground. So you had a sheep herder and you had a farmer. Mm -hmm. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. Underline, firstlings of his flock. And of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Why? Because of his attitude in presenting, him, presenting his offering. He didn't give God some sloppy agape. He didn't give God some greasy grace. He gave God his best. He gave him the first fruit of, him, of what he had received. And the other guy came. He was just like, okay, I'm supposed to give an offering. Block, plop, here you go. It's called, in what we do now, bucket plucking or plate plucking. You're not giving it from your heart. You just, I wish they hurry up. And let me say this to you. We don't stop and take up no collection. Amen. That's not worship. We work, the Offering is a part of worship. So we don't pause and take up no collection. That's error and that's not Bible. Say amen, somebody. Amen. All right, let's keep going. All right. Verse 5, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Why? Because his attitude was wrong and his motive was wrong. And the law, and uh, excuse me, and Cain was very angry. He was wrong. He was hot. He was P.O. Okay? And his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why are you wrong? Why are you angry? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, what is the reason? Sin lies at the door. Amen. That word sin means to miss the mark. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Okay? And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass. When they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and he did what? Why did he slow? Why did he slew him? Why did he slay him? He slayed him because of jealousy. Jealousy is an evil demonic spirit, and you got to be careful not to allow it to get in your heart. It's not just in churches; it's in marriages, it's on people's jobs, uh, it's in the workplace, it's in families. It's in families. Jealousy. All right, let's keep going. Now, this is not a lesson for you to point fingers at somebody else. I sense a couple of you were saying, well, so-and-so need to hear this. No, we need to hear it. Yeah. You need Amen. to hear it. Amen. And let the Holy Ghost minister to you. As I mature and get older in the things of God, everybody else's walk with the Lord is really none of my business. Amen. I got enough to deal with Eric and the Lord yeah. than try to deal with your stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm preaching, baby, you shall. Amen. You might as well say amen. Yes, sir. All right, let's keep going. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. This was the first murder of a human. 
Okay, let's keep going. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the answer is yes. He should have been. But he tried to be smart with God. Yeah. And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Mm -hmm. Church, whose blood is on our hand? Because of jealousy. Because of envy. Whose blood is on our hand? We got to give an account to God. And you ain't got you ain't got to give it you ain't got to give an account on the judgment day right now. R A T. Tell somebody say right now. Right now. Right. All right, let's keep going. It says, and now verse eleven, art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand, when thou tillest the ground. So now there's a semicolon there. He's explaining what the curse is. The curse was he was black. People have used the Bible to justify slavery and racism. It was not because he was black, and it was not to show that black people are inferior to white people. That is an error, and it's a lie. Pastor, what you talking about? People use that. Go do your research. Let's keep reading. And it says this. It says, uh, he went on to explain what the curse was. When you till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield be her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said, unto, Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is great than I can bear. In other words, he was going to be working out in that field, sweat by the fruit of his brow, by the sweat of his brow, and he wasn't going to be able to produce like he was producing before. Before he was walking in abundance, now he's gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, stress him out. It's going to wear him out just to bring forth a little bit. Why? Because of his own disobedience and his own sin. Not because God did something to him, but because he did something against God by killing his brother because of jealousy. And as a result, he released a curse on his life. Not God and not the devil. I want you to hear me now. I want you to hear me in the spirit. Have you opened the door for a curse in your life? Because you're jealous of somebody's house, somebody's car, somebody's marriage, what it appears to be. Amen. Everybody is happy on Facebook. <laughs> Everybody is saved and sanctified and that with a mighty burning fire on Facebook. But you find out where people are when you go home with them in the booth, in the back, in the corner, <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> Say amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> My Lord. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that finds me shall slay me. But look, the Lord, even in Cain's sin, God still had mercy on him. Amen. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Mm -hmm. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Mm -hmm. Alright, got it? Mm -hmm. Alright, now, let's go to 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. The reason jealousy is a problem in the body of Christ because we compare ourselves among ourselves and when we do that the Bible says we are not wise. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Why do we compare ourselves? Because we don't see the greatness of that uh, the greatness of God in us individually. You're too busy looking at, at somebody else. You heard them saying you can't see the trees for the forest. You're so busy beholding somebody else and their success you don't even see the greatness on the inside of you. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. And I stop by to tell you there's greatness on the inside of you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are a king and priest unto our God. The number one problem in the body of Christ is that we have not taught people their identity. But after it's taught, you got to meditate it until it gets down in your spirit. Just because you hear the word here don't mean it gets down in your inner ear. You hear it on these outer ears, but it gets in your inner ear when you spend time meditating and squeezing the juice out of that word. Boy, I'm preaching better than you amen. say, amen. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Your relationship with God is of utmost importance. And many of us, we want the blessing of God, but we don't want to carry out our part. Amen. Second Corinthians amen. chapter 12. 
Now, T, Man. now that's not to put you down. It's just I want you to understand why the why is not working. It's not working not because God is not working. It's not working because we won't work the system. All right. When all else fails, then we go to God. Amen. <laughs> when God should be our first choice. Amen. Well, ain't got nothing else to do but pray. You should have prayed first. Amen. A lot of times, if we will pray prayer ahead of what we're going through, we wouldn't even go through what we go through. Amen. But what we do, we acknowledge God on the end, on the back end. The Bible says, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll do what he'll direct your path. You gotta acknowledge him though on the front end. But see, we want to bring our plan to God and say, Lord, bless my plan. And instead of saying, Lord, what is your plan? And then carrying it out. Yeah, no. I'm still talking about exposing Amen. the spirit of, com of competitive jealousy. Verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Now, it is okay to model and, you know, have mentors in the body of Christ. Learn things. You, you glean. If you are the smartest person in your group, you're in the wrong group. Amen. You, ought, you, ought to, you ought to get around people who are going or who have gotten to where you're trying to go. Amen. You ought to get around people who know more than you, who have more than you, so that you can find out how they get, how they got what they have, and so that you can reproduce and then pass it on to somebody else. Amen. 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 So that's not what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about you looking at somebody down your bony nose and talking about wonder why God blessed them. And then you start giving God a laundry list. I go to church on Tuesday. I go to church on Sunday. I serve on the ushers and greeters. I serve in the choir. Your motive. You don't serve in the choir on and, and usher in, in the hospitality ministry and do those things to try to get brownie points with God. Amen. Have I ever done that? Yep. Lord, why you let this happen to me? I'm having a pity party like Job. But you got to do like that man did when he was in the hog pen. You got to come to yourself. And Hallelujah. Realize, Wait a yes. dog on this. Ha ha. God is not my problem. He is my solution. Amen. 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 All right. Let me read that to you out of the Amplified. And let me say this, it's bad with preachers, and it's bad with churches, and it's bad with denominations. Anything you put above God is an idol. Okay. Some people worship their denomination. They think ain't nobody saved but the folk in their denomination. I can name a few. I can name one that's internationally known. Uh, you hear, you hear yeah, me? They, they swear ain't nobody right but them. Amen. Anything you worship higher than God is an idol. Amen. You can't worship. I don't want new come and seek members to worship me. I'm not God. I'm their pastor. Yeah. I should be reverence and respect, but don't worship me. You worship God. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. You don't worship your denomination or your fellowship. Oh, we got the best fellowship in the world. To you, that's your opinion. Amen. 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 Jesus is the center of it all. Amen. Amen. All right. Not your denomination, not your political party, not your skin color, not your sorority, not your fraternity. You got to get too many amens. It's still right. It's not. All right. Listen to what it says in the Amplified. Not that we have the audacity to venture to class or even to compare ourselves with some who exalt and furnish testimonials for themselves. In other words, folk bragging on themselves. It said, however, when they measure themselves with themselves, or compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding and they behave unwisely. Mm -hmm. When you run into believers and the first thing they start talking about is what they got and who they are and start name dropping, they are insecure. Mm -hmm. We got to get to the point and know and as believers, yeah. we don't have nothing to prove to each other. I'm not impressed by your accolades. I'm not impressed by who you sat on. You know, especially the preacher. Oh, you know, I sat under Bishop Tutu whoever. I sat under Apostle so and so. I, I'm this and I'm that. You ain't got the name drop because if you got the juice, it'll speak for itself. Amen. Amen. You ain't got the name no matter what you got. Amen. The proof of the pudding is in yes. the eating. Amen. And if I'm anointed, everybody gonna know I'm anointed. Say amen, somebody. Amen. If you are anointed, everybody going to know you are anointed. Amen. But it's because of your insecurity. Let me say this unto you. Study it out. Every disciple that Jesus called already had an identity. Mm -hmm. That's right. They already had a career. They didn't think because they came to Jesus that made them something. They were already something. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
And the problem with us in the body of Christ, we don't really know who we are and we ain't really doing that before we come to Jesus. And so all we do is we get Jesus, but we still don't know who we are. Some people think that their career makes them who they are. They think how many degrees they have makes them who they are. What kind of car, what kind of house they are living in makes them who they are. What kind of clothes they wear. I can wear designer, this and designer that. Listen, nothing wrong with those things in their place. You don't wear designer clothes to prove the folk you got it going on. Because people who do that ain't got nothing. They ain't got a pot no one. Everybody can be credit card rich. I'd rather be money broke. Not that I'm going to be broke. I'd rather be money broke than credit card rich. Amen. Amen. Because guess what? I ain't got to pretend. Mm -hmm. we, we, it's too much pretending going on in the body of Christ. Amen. Too much pretending. We got to stop this competitive jealousy because as the believers, we should be the example to the world. Mm -hmm. But you're so busy idolizing the world and going after them that you are you, what you're doing is you're reducing God less and Jesus less than the folk in the world. Because you think they got it going on. Nobody in this world has anything unless God allowed them to get it. Amen. 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 Come on, say glory to God. Glory All right, let me give you some, some, some definitions real quick. Let, 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 let me say this. Well, let me say this. Wherever there is competitive jealousy, there's a Spirit of deception. Competitive jealousy is a high-ranking demonic spirit. And I'm going to show it to you from the word of God. I didn't even know the scripture was in the Bible. Okay? Next thing. Anytime you see competitive jealousy or you want to know the acid test, there's always a critical spirit. Why they do it, what they do, who they think they are. If I were you, I wouldn't go over there. Oh, you go to that church and they try to shame you about who your pastor is or who your church is. Or you work at this church. Oh, you think you better than somebody. Oh, you think you this and that. And that's not how you think. They're deflecting how they really feel. Amen. Anybody in this house tonight? Amen. If we're on the same team, if Kobe and, and LeBron are on the same team, they are not fighting against each other. They're supposed to be going the same direction. Amen. If we're in the body of Christ, I don't care what church you go to. I don't care who your pastor, your bishop, your apostle, prophet, who your evangelist and teacher is. If we're a part of the body of Christ, and I don't care about your skin color. If we're a part of the body of Christ, we are on the same team. Amen. Are we all going to believe in exactly the same thing? Absolutely not. And you gotta watch it who groups who are always God that made them the Holy Ghost, and they can always tell where it's error in somebody else's teaching. Hallelujah. You gotta watch out for those kind of folk because they have an arrogant spirit, they have a better than spirit, and think if you're not a part of their little group, then you ain't got nothing going on. God is bigger than your group. God is bigger than your organization, He's bigger than your denomination, and you ain't all that on a bag of chips. I ain't get too many amen, but it's right anyway. Amen. Now, we must guard our heart not to fall into the comparison trap. That's what happened with Cain and Abel. Cain, he started comparing himself. And really what he should have done was say, okay, well, Lord, why did you accept my brother's offer and not mine? And then the Lord would have told him. But he was so angry and so jealous that he killed him. Mm. How many people have we killed in the body of Christ? Not necessarily killed physically, but we kill them with our words. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Keep yeah. your mouth off of people. Amen. 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 I said, keep your mouth off of people. Amen. Amen. And who died and made you the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Who died and made you the Scripture Police? Mm -hmm. Listen, nobody has a monopoly on the Holy Spirit, and nobody has monopoly on Revelation. Amen. Amen. You think your little group, we, we got it going on and we right. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what my pastor said, and I agree with him, it's true. Everybody got some error in their in, in their doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. Amen. Ain't no church perfect. Mm -hmm. Church of Christ, Church of God in Christ, Church of God Foursquare, Church of God of Prophecy, the Baptist Church, Southern Baptist. Uh, primitive Baptist, full gospel Baptist, United Methodist, African Methodist Episcopal, Christian Methodist Episcopal, and nobody got it all right. Amen. But our one goal should be Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Now, let me go, go to Ephesians chapter 6, and then I'm going to show you the scripture. I'm almost done. 
I know y'all don't believe it, but, but I, I, I'm almost done. It's Christmas. <laughs> Listen to this. That demonic spirits are a well-organized, trained army. And demonic spirits are ranked by, or they are in order, or they are ranked by class. Okay? You have some high-ranking demons and some low-ranking demons. People are not your problem. See, while you're trying to fight somebody in flesh and blood, you got to see the spirit behind that thing. Everything that's going on in your life that's coming against you, it's a spirit behind it. But God ain't going to do nothing with it until you, because he gave you the authority to rebuke the spirit. Right. But many of us, we're too busy to operate in the natural. Oh, wonder why they don't like me. Wonder why they got this, not that. Ask the Holy Ghost, Lord, let me go. open my eyes. Let me see. Let, let the gift of the spirit of discerning of spirits operate so I can see in the spirit realm and see what's really going on. Some of what you're dealing with on your job is a demonic spirit. And it came to buffet you. But his grace is sufficient you. And you got to do something with it. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God.
I'm imperfect, you're imperfect, everybody watching it in this room is imperfect. Amen. Amen. But we serve a perfect Jesus. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Okay, y'all got me preaching. I ain't supposed to be doing all this. I'm supposed to be teaching line up on line, preach up on precept. Here a little, there a little. Ephesians chapter 6. Uh-huh. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. This armor is prayer armor. When you don't pray, you spiritually streak it. Mm -hmm. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the tricks of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Some of us need to meditate that every day. Because your battle is not in the flesh. But the enemy wants you to keep you in the flesh realm because that's the area that he dominates. Satan dominates in his fleshly natural realm. But guess what? As a believer, you got the power to tap into what, something higher than this natural realm. You can tap into the supernatural where Satan is already defeated. But if you fight him on his home, when he got home court advantage, you're going to lose. Mm. All right, let's keep going. Amen. I could have got an amen or something. Or old me. <laughs> Dead of the donut. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but a one on one against principalities. Against what? Powers. Against the rulers of? Of what? Of the world. Of this world. And against what? Spiritual Where? In high places. Now, let me say this. Demonic spirits, they are territorial demonic spirits. You can go back and read that. The Bible says that as the, the angel Michael came to Daniel and said, the Lord heard you the first time, but I was blocked by the prince of Persia, which was a demonic spirit. Mm -hmm. There are demonic spirits over certain areas, and they must be taken down by spiritual people in the spirit who know their authority. Why do you think certain certain kinds of sins reign over certain areas? Because there's a territorial demon, demon there, and that demon rules and reigns because nobody will address it. Hallelujah. And they want to dress it because they don't know he's there. See, the enemy wants us to stay ignorant about spiritual things. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be afraid of the devil. Satan is defeated. Mm -hmm. Demons are real. The devil is real. He ain't nobody with no horns and no fortune tail. Mm -hmm. Next time you act up, look in the mirror, you'll see one. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're demonic spirits. Now, let me show you from the word of God, that jealousy is a principality and a power. When I read this, I was like, wow, I ain't never heard this before in my life. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Go to Ezekiel chapter number three, chapter eight. And I'm done. That's all you can have tonight. But we got to stop being jealous of each other. Let's work together. If they are successful, find out what are you doing to be successful. Now, if they have the spirit of Christ in them, they'll share it with you. Because there's enough for everybody. Yes, there's enough for everybody. Yes, I am not called to reach everybody in Claiborne County. Amen. I'm called to reach who I'm called to reach. Amen. Somebody else, look, and I may be the one who water. Somebody else going to plant. But at the end of the day, God get the increase. Amen. All right, go to Ezekiel. Stop this competitive jealousy. Oh, I ain't going over there. Ezekiel, I ain't going to this church or that church. Or I don't want to hear them or this or that. Jealousy. I don't want the bad stuff around me. Come on, say it for me. <laughs> All right, Ezekiel, chapter 8. I'm reading from the Bible. Ezekiel, Daniel, Jose. All right? Now, I want you to meditate this. Stand it out for yourself. I, I never had heard this before, so I said this lesson. Ezekiel chapter 8, let's start at verse number 3. And he put forth the form of a an hand and took me by a lock of my head. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven. Okay? There's three levels of heaven. Okay? Three levels of heaven. The highest is where God lives. Okay? The next is the atmospheric heaven. That's where demons live. The Bible calls Satan the prince of a power of the air. Mm -hmm. That's why you see him trying to control the media. That's a mountain that the church got to take back. 
Amen. The seven mountains. Mm -hmm. See, everything I'm teaching, it go with, all go together. All right, let's keep reading. It says, uh, uh, the spirit lifted me up between the earth and heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. to the door of the inner gate that looked toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, mm -hmm. which provoked to jealousy. When you allow yourself to be controlled by jealousy, you're being controlled by a demonic spirit. Mm. Let's keep going. Jeez. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Mm. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. In other words, look up. So I lifted up my eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, the image of jealousy in the entry. Mm -hmm. He said, furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I shall go far off from my sanctuary, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall, and when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And doors and keys represent authority. Okay, y'all follow me? And he said unto me, Go in, and behold, the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of the creeping things and the abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan. And every man his sister in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than they do. Mm. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat a woman weeping, for Tamar. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. Mm -hmm. So, he began by showing him the demonic spirit of jealousy. Mm -hmm. And the people in Israel, which represent the church, were saying, Oh, God, don't see us. Mm -hmm. These things are operating. And we're allowed to operate because we think God don't see us. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the, 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 the Lord dealt with this prophet? And the prophet told the people what they had been saying in their bedchamber. Mm -hmm. See, people don't believe that the power of God is real. God will show you things before they happen. Mm -hmm. He'll show you what's going on with people. He'll show you what's going on with things. Not for you to blab your mouth. The reason some of us can't get any further because we talk too much. God can't trust you. Mm -hmm. Everything the Holy Spirit shares with you is not to be shared. Amen. And I'm having to learn it as a pastor. There are some things the Lord shared with me, I can't share it with my congregation. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're not ready. All right. Say amen. 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 So, we got to know that in God's eyes, competitive jealousy is an abomination. Mm -hmm. It stinks in his nostrils. And what it does is it cuts off his power. It cuts off his power to reach the people that need to be reached because we're in deception, we're flowing by a critical spirit, and we think it's okay, and it's not. That it is a demonic stronghold, and it must be torn down with the word. And I'm, I'm, I'm working with God now by, by, by doing what? I'm preaching the word. Yeah. See, the first thing, faith begins where the will of God is known. Many of us didn't even know about this spirit of competitive jealousy. Mm -hmm. We just know about jealousy. Yeah. But it's a competitive spirit. But I've showed you from the word of God that it's demonic. 
and it's dangerous. And why do we need to get it in check? Because the enemy wants to railroad your destiny. Satan hates your guts. Mm. He hates you. He hates everything about you. He hates your family. He hates your marriage. He hates your children. And he wants to make your life a living hell so you'll want to go to heaven and not be on the earth so you can fulfill God's plan for your life. Some people just get tired of fighting. Mm. But when you know that the fight is already fixed mm -hmm. and yeah. you know that you're already winning, yes. Mm -hmm. guess what? When you get tired, yoke up with somebody. Call somebody and say, sister, I'm tired. Pray with me. You got to have somebody to pray with. See, we want to be an island, but no man is an island. Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, deal with our hearts. Deal with our church. Deal with us in Claiborne County. Deal with us in Warren County. Deal with the, the preachers. Deal with the pastors, God. Begin to deal with our hearts, God. Deal with the superintendents in the school. Deal with the teachers, God. Deal with us in our marriages, in our home, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we don't come pointing fingers at anybody. We want you to look inside our hearts. Lord, forgive us for not being the example of unity that we should be to the world. We are more divided in the church than we are in the world. Lord, begin to deal with those deep lying issues. Those issues of abandonment. Those issues of jealousy. Those issues of inferiority that came from our upbringing. Deal with them right now. Deal with our hearts, God, and deliver us so that we can become all that you want us to be. Lord, help us to keep the main thing, the main thing. And that is Jesus. I pray everywhere there's deception, that the deception be removed. That eyes will be open. That hearts will be tender to the word of God. Lord, help me to preach with sweet lips. Because sweet lips increase learning. It's not about me, God. And Lord, I pray for every church in Claiborne County. I pray for every pastor, God, in Claiborne County. I pray that they will find out specifically what God has called them to do. And then they will run in their lane. Because everybody has a different lane to run. But help us to work together in unity and work together in love. I pray that every spirit of competitive jealousy be exposed in Claiborne County. Be exposed in Warren County. Be exposed in Jefferson County. Lord, heal our land. Heal our land. Heal our churches, God. Heal pastors, God. Touch, heal, and deliver. Make hope. Jesus name. Jesus name. Are you saved tonight by saints of praying? Are you saved? Do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? I'm not trying to get you to join my church. I'm trying to get you to join the church. The church of the Lord Jesus. How do I get to know Jesus? How do I come to know him in a true and a real way? Do I got to speak in tongues? Do I got to fall down? Do I got to foam at the mouth? Do I got to stop sinning? No. You come to Jesus just as you are. Weary, worn, and sad. You will find in him a resting place. And he will make you glad. God is not mad with you. He's not upset with you. He's not frustrated with you. Now, as a matter of fact, if you don't know, God loves you. He has a great plan for your life. And God has not changed his mind about you. What do I need to do? It's simple as your ABCs. It's simple as your ABCs. And I'm, I'm scrolling here because I want to read them directly to you to make sure I got it right. Well, Pastor, I, I, I thought you knew them. Well, I, I do know them, but I want to read them so I don't miss nothing. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody say praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But it's just simple as your ABCs. Simple as your ABCs. Come on. I know our time is up. But I want to minister this to you because you need to be saved. It's not time to be playing. It's not time to be out of the ark of safety. You need to be in the plan of God. Somebody say in the plan of God. Plan of God. And God has a plan for yes, your life. Yes, Somebody say amen. amen. Say God has a plan, God has a plan. For, my life. for my life. And something good is going to happen for me. Hallelujah to God. Now somebody said, Pastor, you keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And scrolling. When you 
gonna get to it. When I get to it, I guess. Does anybody? What's the first one? Uh, Y'all supposed to know. Admit. Admit. Very good. Admit that you are self. And you need to say, listen. None of us got it all together. None of us got it all together. But guess what? We can come to Jesus and He can help us get it together. So admit that what you're selling and that you need to say. Next, you got to believe. B, believe that number one, God sent Jesus for you and God loves you. You ain't got to try to do everything right for God to love you. He already loved you. He already accepted you just like you are. But believe that Jesus is the solution for the sin problem. It's not you stop sinning. You can't stop sinning without Jesus. Jesus is the answer to the sin problem. And C, you confess it with your mouth. Confess it with your mouth means to say and to acknowledge. If you don't say it with your mouth, according to scripture, you're not born again. So I want to lead you in a simple confession, and then we're done. Why don't you pray this with me? If you know you're not saved, pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, realize, I realize and I admit and I that I am a sinner and I, and I need a Savior. And I, need a and savior. I believe that Jesus Christ is the solution to my sin problem. And I confess him now, Jesus the Christ, as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe that he died. He died so that I could be forgiven. And he rose again so that I could walk in power. So on tonight, I now take Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. And on tonight, I am saved, I am saved, I am saved. Come on, give God a good If you believe what you pray, you can be spiritual without being emotional. So you don't have to feel nothing. So, welcome to the family of God. Why don't you text us, if you made a decision for Jesus, text us at 601-618-8283. We just want to send you a PDF of the new birth. It'll explain to you in depth what has happened. It'll explain to you what you need to do. And the first thing you need to do, if you're not in a good word teacher church, is find you one. Don't go to the church because mama didn't go to it. Find you a pastor, the pastor that God has for you. Yes. Say amen. amen. Now, let's go tonight into the word that we've heard. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto what? Your bosom. For with the same measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. So giving is a form of worship. So on tonight, let's sow a seed. Let's, let's ask the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, what would you have me to sow tonight? And whatever you have you to sow, I got me somebody need the envelope up front. Whatever the Holy Ghost would have you to sow, then guess what? Do what he said because guess what? There's a blessing in your obedience. Yes, it is. Amen? Amen. It's not no gimmicks. We ain't got no gimmicks. We ain't playing the lottery. I got people in my church that testify. During the pandemic, people have been, been getting bonuses, raises. People have been getting increased in a pandemic because God is not bound by the bending elements of this world. And he loves you. We're not trying to pay God. We're just simply saying, thank you, Lord. Yeah, for let me hear this word and bring get revelation. We love you all so much, and I want to applaud our church for how they give. Yes. Man, we're able to, we got all the 10 bikes put together. We The, the ladies are down there now getting the toy bags together. And it's all because of your generosity. And not just members of our church. We have people who are friends from everywhere who sold into this ministry. Believe you me, you can trust us. It's being used for what we say is being used Amen. for. It's all about people. Amen. Amen. Money is for blessing. So, yes. Father, I thank you so thank much you, for every seed sown. Yes. And we pray for those who are in between jobs. We pray for those who need a better job. We yes. speak increase and divine favor. We thank you that doors are being opened even in a pandemic. And we yes. thank you, Father. We will not be caught up in hyperconsumption during this holiday season. Yes. In all things, we will become, we will be content in the things that we have. Yes. And Father, we give you glory. Lord, put other folk on our mind and on our heart. So that we can be a blessing to them. Yeah. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, y'all look carried away, but let's what? I got carried away because we not meet next week. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. So y'all we go. Now, Sunday I made an error. My members, our members, those who you be coming in person, and even those of you online, because I want you to take some pictures and send it to us so we can post. We're gonna wear Christmas colors on Sunday, not ugly sweaters. We're going to have a Christmas party, a Zoom Christmas party for our church later where you can wear your ugly sweater. But on Sunday, wear your Christmas colors. Red, green.
green, black, whatever. We're going to have a good time. Amen. Come worship with us on Sunday as we celebrate the birth of our Lord. And then next week, you are off. The only thing that my wife and I are going to do, we're going to surprise our leadership team with a parade just for them. Because we want to thank our leaders for being who they are. Amen? Amen. So listen, I love you. Don't forget about Saturday. Come get these toys. We don't want any toys, Lil. First come, first serve. Now, let me tell you about the bikes and then I'm going to go. What we did with the bikes, we reached out to the supervisors. They gave, in, in, in the county of Claiborne County, they gave us names so those bikes will be gone when you get here. No oh. more beating bikes. We're going to give those to children who are really in need in these different areas in Claiborne County. Amen? Amen? So, praise God. They won't be here. So, and that solved that issue because we were wondering how we're going to give it out. So, two bikes for each supervisor that was asked. Okay? I don't know if we got a chance to ask everybody, but two bikes for each supervisor, supervisor that was asked. So, if, but everything else is free for all. Come, wear your mask. Parents bring your children. No, ma'am, no, sir. Can I get a bag for Bebe and Sugar Ray and Lulu and, and Kaka? No. <laughs> children need to be present. Amen? Amen. Well, we love you so much. Come and let us be a blessing to you. We just want to love on you. Remember, in all you're getting, yeah. you understand? Jesus.